everyone. Welcome to our webinar. We're very excited to have everybody here. Um, we're going to start with a welcome from Brent. So I'm going to pass over to him. And yes, enjoy. At Care for Education, I have a small but very dedicated team who not only do all the outreach training required, but who also support with Six Bricks training from levels one to five, and whose role it is to support all of you. All of you, on the other hand, have been chosen or have chosen yourself to work with Six Bricks. Your role has been invaluable. You have supported the concept. You invested time developing the idea. You have assisted with adapting the content. You have promoted Six Bricks in your communities. But most importantly, you have inspired. Inspired others to use Six Bricks to help children. Inspired each other to build this community of practice. And in the process, you have inspired all of us. We want to thank you for all that you do. Please continue to make the difference in the world that you already do. Have a fantastic time today. I really look forward to spending the next hour or so with you. Thank you. Thank you, Brent. Okay, and then we're going to go on and introduce our first speaker. He is very popularly known as our employee of the year. There's just a, a great a mugshot. Um, but I want to introduce Yaku uh, from Northwest University uh, to do our first presentation. Hi, everybody. Um, it's a bit weird not seeing you, but I know you guys can see me. Um, so, yeah, I think we've got some slides that you guys can put up there. Cool. So basically what my dream in the world is, is systemic change for sustainable education um, and development for children. So I, I basically made my own idea, theory model, call it what you want to. And for me, it's just about, you know, making a difference where you can make a difference. Cool. I'm going to hit the clicker. So mm, click. See if it's on on the side. Actually. See if it's on. It's not on. No, it's on. Ah, there we go. So to give you a bit of context about who I am, um, I'm an educational psychologist, but, you know, it's it's nothing special. Um, I love the development of kids, of people, of everybody out there. Myself, I'm an ADHD kid um, who always hates at school because you have to sit quietly and not be active. That's why you'll see I don't sit on the throne. I always move around because I have to move around. It's just who I am. And then I was lucky enough to go to New Zealand. Um, I worked there as an educational psychologist for the Ministry of Education, and I started a BRICS program in New Zealand. So it's basically Lego therapy, six BRICS, everything in schools every day. Um, it's quite amazing to see not only teachers change, but children change, because we need them to actually look at the world differently. And that's my dream. Okay? Our focus was building the good citizen, because if you build the good citizen, you know, a happy worker is a hard worker. A happy child is going to come to school and they're going to get the education that they need. Some of these kids come from really, you know, um, difficult backgrounds. But when they walk into school, then they can actively engage in the classroom. They kind of forget everything, um, you know, that happened at home or in life in general. And that's the thing. If we are actively engaged in learning, we focus more, we learn more, and we actually enjoy school. Because there's no other distractions. Because life, as you guys know, are full of distractions. Then, um, now <laughs> we had to move back to South Africa. My wife wanted to come back. She missed home a bit. So we're back here. And I was lucky enough to become a lecturer at the Northwest University, so NWU. And we are trying to start a new way of teaching. Not only chalk and talk and do what normal boring lecturers do. We incorporate Six Bricks, Lego, play-based learning, everything into our curriculum. So for me, especially with our honours group, um, and we're lucky enough there are two of my honours group now actually here, yeah, um, we try and teach them to use six bricks and Lego therapeutically. So, you know, how do we assess? How do we um, scan? How do we screen for certain shortfalls in children? Um, just using a play-based model without them even knowing that they are being assessed. Because the thing is, if you put a child in front of you and they know it's a test, automatically they're more stressed. But if they think it's fun and games and they play, they're more themselves, okay? The other thing that we've started to do over there is we focused on a bit of pre-teacher um, service training, where we got some of our teachers that are studying education 
um, playing with six bricks. It's part of their curriculum now. They each get one of these sets and they have to think about how can I use it in class? How do I use it to assess? How do I use it to teach? What more is there? Um, how do I change my pedagogical view? Difficult word. Um, <laughs> on teaching, you know, instead of just chalk and talk and standing in front of a class, which is teacher led, how do I incorporate everybody? And if you start it with them while they're studying, it will influence every year as they progress. So by the time they are actually let loose as qualified teachers into the wild, wild world out there, they have something to fall back on. They've got a tool. And for me, that was the main thing, even when I started in New Zealand. We always go and we do a needs analysis and ask people, what do they want? What do they need? You know, how can we help you? And then we give them these theories and they have to go, you know, okay, I've got a theory, you know what? But if you give them a tool and you let them experience it and they can play with it and they can explore with it, it actually helps bucket loads. So you'll see there at the bottom, I said, I realize I'm only one person. Me, myself, at, on my own, I can't change the world. But it's like a drop in the ocean. As soon as you drop, it ripples out, okay? So I asked myself, who spends the most time with children? And it's not their parents, okay? It's basically their cell phone first, yes, but also their teacher. If you go and you work out the amount of hours of kids in school over the period of their lifetime, the people that influence them the most will be teachers. So it's important for me to actually get there and actually help them with a tool to help children. Because if they are one teacher, and in South African context, they're between 30 and 40 kids in the classroom. If you get one person on 40 kids playing with this, okay, it's already making a bigger impact. Okay, So that's why I said they have the biggest impact. And they can be the generalist helper. So those of you who've been to a doctor, you go to a GP, which is a general practitioner, yes. They look at you and you're kind of go like, oh, okay, it's just a bit of a cough, here's some medicine. But if they don't have the skills to help you, they refer you to a specialist. So what if we train teachers, okay, um, to use these bricks to teach, but also to scan for any shortfalls? Is there someone with a, um, what do you call it, it's a gross motor or fine motor skill uh, development issue? Is there a language issue? Is there a reading issue? Can they see the colors? Can they sort the colors? Um, are they struggling with maths? And maybe if you practice this in every day, it already builds on their development because some of them don't get stimulated at home, but also refer to a specialist and get them the help that they need, you know, faster. Because at the end of the day, we all know if you grab them when they're young, you um, negate the problem when they're big. So that's my passion because like I said, I was an ADHD kid myself. So I wish there was six bricks and Lego in schools when I was young. So change. How do we change the system? How do we change teachers? How do we change people's views? Basically, the main thing is change. Whoop, click, there we go. All right, change, okay? Why is our education system the same and stuck in its way, teaching the same way as we did in the 1820s, okay? But the world around us evolved. Why aren't we changing? Because, well, change is scary. Everybody is really scared about change. But the main thing is people misinterpret change. People will tell you, oh, you changed. Friends of yours will say, oh, you changed. Yes, I changed, but I've actually grown. Grown is a better word than change because people fear change, but they don't fear growth. And that's how you inspire others, by telling them to grow as teachers and as people. So how did I get the Ministry of Education in New Zealand to back me? How did I get the university to back me? How did I get brains and everybody to back me? I used my six bricks. You will see the colors line up, okay? Because it does spell bricks. It says believe. Believe in what you are doing, believe in yourself, believe in others, okay? If you want to convince someone to use something, believe in it, right? Relate it, relate it to the curriculum, relate it to your school, your principal, your whoever, relate it to other people, build relationships. If you can relate and show them the power of this, you're halfway there already. Then it's all about the individuals. I never take credit. The program in New Zealand is working beautifully. The program at the university is working beautifully. And it's not me. It's not Six Bricks. It's the people that you inspire by believing in them and relating to them, and those individuals going out and making the difference. The people here at Care for Education, amazing people, because they believe in what they're doing, and they're the ones that need all the credit making the difference. Then create, create the answer to the problems by using something creative. Okay, be creative in the way that you solve the problems. There are more than one ways. I tell teachers, use this and create your own answer to your problem. Okay, you can fix it. And a lot of people don't believe it because no one lets them or gives them the opportunity to actually be creative and um, solve their own problems. Finally, knowledge. Use your own knowledge as a teacher, as a psychologist, as you know, knowledge about people, knowledge about the education system, knowledge about theories, and build it into this. And then finally, all of that will make it sustainable. Because you need people, you need skills, you need um, knowledge to make anything sustainable. 
And this program is running really, really well at the university and in New Zealand because the people that are doing it, because I'm not in New Zealand anymore, but it's still continuing, they keep it sustainable because we gave them the knowledge by training them. We gave them a solution by making them be the creators of their own solutions, and they are running it with all their heart. So basically, what did South Africa and New Zealand teach me in terms of structure and using my bricks? Well, people don't know their true power. Teachers don't know their true power because they're not um, left or not supported in a way that they can actually use their own abilities, use their own creativity. And they're not empowered enough because at the end of the day, it sucks for them to just, yeah, you have to come up with this, with the solution. Here's a theory and they step back. But no one hands them something, okay? And then finally, I'm going to end off now. My next phase is this. I know I'm preaching to the converted, but there's a 2.0. I believe in my developmental theories. Pre-service um, teacher training at university level is really important. And at the end of the day, I would love to see this happen, okay? A lifelong learning model where you build from six bricks all the way through to robotics and you build on everything that children need. From a young age, you use free play, semi-structured play and structured play to build upon it. And that's basically what I believe in. So I know I've only got 10 minutes. They're going to throw me with some Lego now because <laughs> uh, I think my time's up. And yeah, so just keep it easy, use your bricks and always make people feel valued. That's me in a nutshell. Thank you very much, Yaku. Um, guys, we've done uh, 10 minutes of speaking and we've got five minutes of questions. So please, if you've got questions for Yaku, yes, please yes. type them into the chat and we will um, make sure that he answers them. Um, and, you know, just feel free to ask anything and to get some information and knowledge from him. He really is our biggest fan. So <laughs> I'm short. Yes, I'm short. He really but, is uh, short. Uh, yes, yes. Hey. Look next to me and I'm really short. So we know this is a true story. That's well into New Zealand, the land of the Hobbit. You know, I was actually there trying to find a house, but couldn't find one in Hobbiton. So that is what it is. <laughs> the Shire was taken. Yes, yes, yes it was. But my house has one ring to rule them all, but unfortunately it's on my wife's hand, so it's just <laughs> one of those things as well. So please ask questions, guys. If you if you need anything from our side, um, feel free to ask me. If, even if you want to email me, I think you can ask Abby or anybody here. They've got my email address. Send me emails, um, and I'll try and help you as best as I can. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being here. Um, yeah, if you, I think you can raise a hand as well if you've got any questions. Yes, or just type it in the, or type it in the chats chat. or wherever. Cool. Cool. See, I spoke too long, though. We've just got questions. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fine. Okay. This one from Jameson. Here we go. The problem does not die with teachers. It has everything to do with the system. Yes, I agree, Jameson, because at the end of the day, that's why I said I'm, I'm aiming to go towards systemic change. Because if you change the system, they will support the teacher better. And, and that's my main thing, because nobody asks the teacher really what they want. So for me, that's what I did when I started in New Zealand. I didn't go there and say, boom, this is your solution. I did a um, needs analysis, because that's what I'm trained to do as a psychologist. So I asked them, cool, what is your biggest need? What do you want? And they told me, I want a tool. I don't want a theory. I'm sick of theories. Give me something that I can implement, you know, and, and give me a skill. And that's where it all started. So... I believe in systemic change, and, and that's the only way to really make a bigger impact at the end of the day. And like I said, you know, it, I started small, really not big. I started with one or two schools, and it grew throughout the Bay of Plenty where, where I was situated. And it's all about the people around you, the people that you inspire. So I agree with you. The problem is never with the teachers. It's about the system. And Martin has just said there, and I think what you just said now is also some of that advice starting small, but he also says any other advice on approaching teacher training colleges in our countries to get six bricks into pre-service training. I think starting small was a good one. Starting small, <laughs> and, and I'm working on it. So <laughs> we are at the Northwest University now. I'm going to try and work with my colleagues as hard as I can to show them the success of it. And then also, you know, get other universities and, and teacher training colleges to come see how we do it. Because at the end of the day, the proof is in the pudding. I can talk about it till I'm blue in the face. Trust me, these ladies know. I don't care. If that's why I'm short. I can talk a lot. I'm like a Bluetooth speaker. But at the end of the day, you know, it's about showing people the results and not just talking about the results. Because I'm all about results. I'm a results-driven person, unfortunately. And that's why I work so hard. Because I if I believe in something, you know, I'll, I'll go 110% in it. Uh, any advice on approaching teacher training? Yes, did that. And then... Me and my approach starts with leaders yes. of a school. Yes, convince them and get the teachers training in. Yes, 
then use it to open doors. Yeah. And I believe, yeah, that's, Jensen, I 100% agree with you. If you don't get management's backing, they won't let you go to their teacher. So I agree with you. But it's about just inspiring them as well and showing them the power of this. I think that's me for, you, for the day. Good luck, guys. Enjoy it. And hopefully I didn't speak too long and got you guys <laughs> all asleep. Cheers, mate. Thank you, Yaku. And a very nice introduction to Linda, for Linda, who's speaking next on our Foundation Phase initiative um, and looking at how we get it into that pre-service training. So thank you, Linda. And Thank you. I am going to sit on the throne because I know Abby and, and um, Jana took a great pains to put it together, so I'm going to sit on the throne. Hi, everybody, and lovely to, as you were all logging on, it was so good to see so many names that I recognized. Um, lots that I didn't as well, but it just goes to show how our facilitators are, are growing um, around the world. And also great to see so many countries also that logged on or people from so many countries. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to quickly chat about an amazing program that's running in South Africa. I'm sure there are a couple of you that already know about this program. And it's called the Foundation Phase Initiative. So I'm going to introduce a little about what it's all about, or what the, the program is all about. Um, just to also state that it is a program which is for our grade R's, which um, is about five to, or it's five to six year olds, and all the way up to our grade threes, which are about nine year olds. And it's about bringing in a learning through play approach into the classrooms. And obviously, as you can see on the slide there, it involves the Six Bricks tool. Um, and also, Care for Education is largely responsible for all the training and also has been responsible for the development of all the content um, that is being used for the training. So as we go through, I just want to, I'm going to share a little bit about um, how it started, where we are in the program, and also a little bit about the impact that we are making. So first of all, when we have a look at this, we, when we have a look at the program itself, we have got key partners. Obviously, Care for Education is part of it, but we've also got the Department of Basic Education, we've got UNICEF, and we've got the Lego Foundation. Department of Basic Education is critical to this program. Um, and we started at a national level to get them involved. Um, and obviously, Lego Foundation is also funding the whole program and putting six bricks into the hands of every single child. And when this program was initially envisaged and we looked at what would be the outcomes that we are looking at, we, there were, were a couple that we wanted to ensure that we achieved. And the first one, obviously, was bringing in a play-based approach. To, um, to teaching and learning that is happening in the classroom. And this was really critical. And focusing this on our teachers, can they bring it in to the classroom? It's already part of our curriculum. Um, we follow a curriculum called the CAPS curriculum. And it's uh, learning through play is part of it. But so often it's the first thing that flies out of a classroom when teachers get in to teach because it does take time and it does create chaos in the classroom. So we were hoping to change teachers' mindsets and attitudes towards this play-based approach. The other important thing that we also looked at was ensuring that if you have a look at the little diagram there, that children were always the center of this program. They were the ones that we are hoping to reach. And by reaching those children, we wanted to also look at a very skills-based approach and that in, in, in allowed us to bring in the breadth of skills when we were uh, in our teaching and our training. Um, and also making sure that when we did do the training, we went through a system which allowed, it's almost a top-down system, which allowed us to work with um, our, our uh, department, our districts, our school management team, our teachers to get to those children. So, Again, as I'm sure you're all aware, this is our Six Bricks um, uh, seminar. Well, it's all about the Six Bricks. We had to start by getting Six Bricks out, um, first of all, from Denmark to South Africa, so that we had um, the bricks available. But 
when we deal or part of this program is making sure that every single child has a set of six bricks in their hand so there you can see some photographs we get these six bricks out and about um, all the way through south africa we use um, a road, a road uh, uh, transport and we use a company called Emit, which has been great. Uh, a Duncan can, uh, can attest to the difficulties that we've had in trying to get it uh, around the country, but it certainly allows, we make sure, we care for education, make sure that every single school that we are, are training, every single child and teacher has a set of six bricks in, in their possession. And obviously, because it's part of the program, the training that we also do. So care for education trains at various levels. We've always started um, with a model at which started with national uh, department, but goes to each of the provinces. And we ensure that all the provincial officials are trained and also are able to advocate for this program. We move to the districts, so we train all of the subject advisors that are in the foundation phase. This training is normally done over three to four days so that these facilitators or subject advisors are able to train their own teachers. We then go and do an advocacy workshop in our school management um, and with our circuit managers. So all principals and HODs of schools that are involved in the program join an, an advocacy workshop. And this is really critical so that they we create a buy-in and that those principals then can support their teachers. And then our final training is done with teachers and we've got two models. One is a two-day face-to-face model and the other is a one-day face-to-face uh, -face followed by an online course. And I'll talk a little bit about the online course a little later. But that training is also hands-on. So the teachers come in there, very little theory is covered where they have to write things down. It's done, the theory is covered in a hands-on approach. And I'm sure you can see from some of those pictures there, teachers really do enjoy. It. It's something different, um, but they enjoy and they walk away and they can't wait to get into their classrooms. And then finally, obviously we've spoken about this, children are the center of this whole program. We want to get to our children. We want to ensure that learning happens. And what we do find is through the program that children are loving it. They have so much fun in the classroom. Every single child, because they have their own set of six bricks, they are engaged in the lesson. Um, it's hands-on. They, they, we find that our slower learners also are able to really build their conceptual understanding and it helps in their own um, learning. And every time a teacher also picks up that brick, it is playful, but there is some meaning to it. Um, and our children, they never seem to get tired of doing it, the activities. They want to do it over and over and over again. But our research is also starting to show us that, that there's been a huge drop in absenteeism as well around this. So hopefully we're encouraging our children to come to school um, and to also be part of the learning process. So... If I have a look over the last, we are two and a half years into the program. It was a five year, five year rollout. But just so that you have an idea of what we have, or what we have reached in terms of um, schools and teachers, we've over the three years, and you can see there on, the, on the, um, the graph, over the three years, we've already reached 3,600, just over 3,600 schools. And in our advocacy workshops, we've also reached just under 6,000 principals and, and HRDs, which also for us is, is really important so that we can create the buy-in. If I have a look at teachers, you can see that we are also just over 24,000 teachers that have been trained. And what you will notice is we started the program in 2019, so you'll see it there, it's the orange um, block, but in, in 2019, it was um, more, it wasn't a pilot, but it was a smaller rollout to test concept. In 2021, you'll notice 2020, is there's a miss there. That was our COVID and we put things on hold because we couldn't get into the schools. So 2021, we had a small increase, but what you will have noticed now, as we start going to scale, the huge number that we are reaching this year. 
Um, and, and most of those have already been reached as well. And then if we have a look at children numbers, our learner numbers, we are really almost knocking on the door of 900,000 children that we've reached in two and a half years. So for us, that's also such a good and positive step forward in getting children to be exposed to, to learning through play. And we're hoping by next year, we'll be well over the million mark. Just in, because this is all about six bricks, well, you can see we are just under a million sets of six bricks that have been part of this rollout over the last two and a half years. So masses, um, massive amounts of bricks going into, into the hands of children, teachers, as well as into our school management and into our provincial departments. So where are we moving to? Well, as you know, there's a picture of South Africa there. We have got nine provinces in South Africa. Our first two years that we've had, we have looked at, or, or the first three years rather, we've looked at working in the purple, the orange and the yellow provinces there. So that they were Eastern Cape Free State and um, Gauteng. We've completely finished our free state. And this year, we also are starting to go into the yellow province or into the green province, which is Limpopo. But over the next two years, we are going into all the other provinces in South Africa and completing about 20 to 30 percent of those provinces where Kevra Education will be directly involved in the training. So we are moving throughout South Africa and that for us is really exciting as well. Then just to quickly, I said I'd touch on it, the online course, um, this was a COVID mitigation plan. Uh, we didn't have any idea or any thoughts of putting an online course together, but because of COVID, it was developed in 2020. And what we have found is that it's really been successful and a wonderful way to reach our teachers. But in South Africa, and I'm sure many countries around the world, we still have huge problems around access to, um, to Wi-Fi access uh, for teachers. So that's, it still is a bit of a chink in our armor, but what our, our, our online course does provide, it does provide that hybrid model. So in some of the models that we're doing, specifically in a Gauteng area, we do a one day face-to-face -face and then the teachers go and do the online course. The good thing is that it is zero rated, so it doesn't cost or doesn't take any data. And, and of course, when the teachers complete both the online course as well as our face-to-face, -face, they do get CPD points, which is an important part of teacher development as well. So just to conclude and to finish off, we are halfway through the program. We are really thrilled with what we are seeing with the way that the training is happening. We're making lots of changes all the time to try and make sure that we keep on top of making uh, of ensuring that it's sustainable, that teachers are enjoying it. And our initial observations that we've done really show that it's making a difference. And luckily, currently as we speak, we are um, doing some research or there's a company called NBA doing some research in the Popo. Um, and we'll have some really good solid results out in January about this program. So there we go. Any questions that people may have? Thank you. Wow, there was that. <laughs> With all the work that goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. But if there are any questions, pop them in and, and we'll be able to answer them as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Linda. And as, as I said, there is so much going on behind the scenes here at Care for Education. So we are, are busy, busy, busy. Um, our, our next presenter is Pespian. Uh, she is from Singapore and is doing incredible work with uh, the elderly using six bricks. So we're very excited to uh, hear her presentation. Pespian, are you with us? Oh, sorry, just while we're waiting for Pesfia to just log on, Linda, there was one question there. Yeah. Do you think that we, the facilitators and lead facilitators can help, the facilitators can help in any way with training? This was from Mernal. Hi, Mernal. I did see that question. And you know what's amazing is that you would most probably be able to comfortably just roll into this training. But because it's specifically based and it's hands-on and it's mostly face-to-face -face in South Africa, 
Um, that's where we are at the moment. So definitely for the rest of the rollout um, of this year and into next year, until we have some of the research back um, on, on our training models, uh, at the moment, it's it's definitely is face to face in South Africa, but you never know what the future holds. <laughs> <laughs> right, Kessia, so lovely to have you with us. Thank you for having me again. Um, it's a privilege to be sharing what this road that I have trodden, which is less taken. <laughs> I'm working <laughs> with a lot of education in children's sector and still do as a very active practice practitioner and trainer and facilitator in fully certified course. But in this aspect of how six brick melt into the aging population has been something quite burning in my heart. For those who know, my mom and dad has been part of this community. Um, so here I am trying to cover all these within the 10 minutes. So I will share about my journey and the different stages, what work, what don't. I'm going to keep it really in bullet point. Uh, the type of activities and um, what I came up with to support the caregiver as well as to make the program autopilot after they left my training. <laughs> so there's this one break activity bank for one month to 12 months. If they ask for more, we will continue to supply. If not, the one month, after the one month, they probably are very independent. Support for the care professional, what we melt out with, I have reshaped the domain and skill glossary for them since they are not very much into the educational term, uh, the, the pedagogy, the, the, those, those behavioral characters, characteristic. A modified template for them to do their own reflection as well as how I propose how to help them to empower their own family members or their clients, uh, caregiver. So later we will sort out the term. So after I left um, CFE, uh, Care for Education in November 2019, in December, I pitched to my first daycare center, that's my mom's daycare, and I conducted a demo, and a few teachers melt out the, and roll out the tricky tower and cover it with a dice, tipsy tower with a pack. Just three activity, and we can see that the program roll. So they had a good time. After in Jan, when COVID started, all my all our agreed program starts to shut down because, as you know, the there's no visitor, no training, no meeting in fives, and it it's only started in two and a half years down the road that things starts to open up. So by June two zero two zero and June two zero two one that I started to conduct another center, that's Alzheimer's Disease Association. They have four centers called the New Horizon. So I start to get a few samples from caregiver, program managers, occupational therapists, speech therapists, managers. Until today, my, this manager has been connecting me to other healthcare center that is like NTC Health Hub. If those who know Singapore, we really rule by a certain system. The moment you are en enter into the system, you probably can start rolling the ball. If not, it's just a, a dead end. So anyhow, um, here I am, one man show trying to do this. So the journey has been hard, and but it was fun, of course. And let me continue and start with the different stages. Later, um, what I say that will work and not work is partly because of the characteristic and profile and the different stages. So um, stage one to advanced stage are very diverse in each of the spectrum. So we have onset to high functioning advanced in daycare centers. And we are talking about daycare as in the former ones. So here are the seven stages. I'm working with the stage two to stage six within daycare center. And we can see that in three months, the decline is in three months, sad to say. Particularly the COVID has, uh, we have a circuit breaker of three months from March to June. So by July, they came back. We can see them in severe cognitive decline. Um, yeah, so the onset characteristic is very moody, mood swing, want to feel empowered and very dignified. We're looking at onsets are age 45 to 55, young onset. They are not the 70s 
or 80s. So um, we're looking at, I work with this group, young onset and middle and high level, high functioning. So these are the, my group of clients that I train the teachers or the trainer or the caregiver. Um, so by three months down the road, George 48 is one typical example. He no longer can talk. So when we kind of look at this kind of reduced language where it only looks. So we were then looking at how six break and it works. It still works. So we, we will share with you what don't work first. What don't work is noise. Anything that fall on the floor or, 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 or how do I put it? Make a lot of laughter. A, a burst of laughter are quite, quite um, not suitable. So here we want to discuss if we are, if you are working with elderly or, or active aging people, this is what we are not looking at. Too many bricks. So three bricks with different orientation is already too tough. Group setting is not suitable, sad to say. Long activities out, as in like anything more than five to 10 minutes is too much for them. But uh, one of my dimension, uh, one of the New Horizon has used a uh, half an hour activity and they stretched to 40 minutes. So it's very hard to say what works and what don't. So the empowerment is back to the trainer. So that is what is very difficult to work in this industry, in this particular sector, I mean. Um, exhaustion, when they are mentally very tired, that's the time where certain activities like maths, um, movements are very tough. So you have to cut down to maybe five movements and they are done. <laughs> Falling too many times is out and different terms. We're working with different dialects and language difficulty in Singapore. We are a multi-language society. All the elderly speak different language. So this bricks come in with uh, the different terms of like under, underneath on top, above, it's very hard in dialect, okay? <laughs> That's just a sidetrack for those who are working in multiracial society. Um, keeping it short and simple is kind of a taken, uh, a given, but that is a, a season and a good craftsman uh, discernment. What is short and simple, and yet what is cognitively intervening that decline? So that's the magic key where the more you work with the more you will sense so i found out that it's just not easy for you to work with someone that do not know you so the empowerment is still back to the caregiver i'll go back to that later so one to three bricks is really awesome um, a lot of cloth they love pattern cloth floral cloth and it helps to reduce sounds, of course, that also keep it friendlier, where they find it's a, as if it's a kitchen table. They are something very associated with. Um, okay, this is a very tricky part. Um, as most classroom or educator will know, they're always differentiated for profile group. Yeah, and so when the demand, when they are decline in the same group, is the rate of decline is different, it makes the care professional um, find it even more difficult. So we have to implement caregiver, I mean they will, the client and caregiver will come to support each other. So we are now melting it, uh, the, giving the instruction to the caregiver and the caregiver work in pair with the um, client. Client is the dementia patient. So that's what I meant to say, support caregiver to support client. That's, uh, we will come to that. I will share with you how, what we are doing at the back in order for them to find the support, where the training is for them to support the client. So instead of working with dementia care center, I have to work with families with dementia patients. So that is a shift again. That's where I start to roll out my course into a seven hours training, which I will come to that later. Start with only movement mat. That is a finger. Without bricks, they love the fingers. So I think um, the best way to start is the movement mat. And they just move their finger from color to color, numbers to numbers. 
and you can complex make it complex there i find the movement mat is one that the dementia daycare center help uh, work a lot with um and they, they they use that to orientate their living room to bedroom to kitchen and that was quite interesting to see how they turn left turn right and that's all they need to do and using language so you can see a lot of activity with the movement mat um so quick one Assessment, very good to test all these. So that's what we find that um, beside bringing laughter is a very good assessment to see their memory because uh, what they are doing is they're losing sense, number sense, counting sense, holding memory of how much have I counted, three is a lot. So, and visual discrimination of colors is very difficult for them too. That As I work with them, I start to see that is it's lower the level lower level than I could even conceive. So you can see you're, you're so humbled to see you probably cannot imagine what the practitioner are facing. So um, we start to focus one area at one time. If we want to do physical, it's just physical. If it's balancing or it's color or it's sound, we do one thing, one moment, one break, and we are done for the day. Uh, like I just earlier mentioned, a lot of social fun where they enjoy putting the bricks on the hand and balance. So they balance on the hands. It's very good for group. That's the only one that I find it take off for group activity when the COVID restriction opens up, where the caregiver and the client relationship become more pairing and on par. Client put the, put the bricks on the hands of their caregiver and the caregiver drop it and cannot balance. So you can see them laughing now because they could see the vulnerability of their own caregiver. And that is so empowering. So we, we actually help them to see the equality. They are coming back in equal terms than to feel lousy about their decline. So this is something that for those who work with dominant characteristic, you want to observe very closely. So you can see how much is on their plate. So um, sad to say, it doesn't really work partly because of a systemic issue. Like many pra practitioners find it very hard because they, are they only have two hours. Only when I, we have a 10 weeks program, that's when they start to implement a half an hour program to test it out, whether to shortlist the program. We, because of that two hours, 10 weeks program, I could, shortlist the type of activity, reduce the instructions, and we redo the one month activity bank for them to carry out by the caregiver as well as the care professional. And also we are looking at management are not exactly supporting the staff to blend cognitive training, partly because they want research finding. Oh, that was the best thing about Singapore culture. Everything is statistic. So, um, of course not at this infancy stage, but they have to give us some autonomy and empowerment. So this is another breakthrough point that we are still, I'm still struggling with the individual partners. And this fast changing staff movement, that's another very difficult reality check of HR, where if the staff keep moving, we have to retrain and they, they are bogged down with administrative, legislative, there's no longer easy for me to carry on that center. So one of the center kind of gradually have to halt the program, which I have to collect back the bricks because uh, I don't think the new staff could carry out the activity unless they redeem their office hour to come here for a training since I couldn't go over because they are occupied by their own job and duty. So you can see how much constraint that the whole industry to get into, come with, come along with this. Um, yeah, so I would, I would um, also, the two years gap also was due to the social distancing where no passing of breaks, no throwing, no sharing, no building together, a lot of sanitizing. So we keep to one break to yourself. So a lot of uh, minimum contact. Okay, now what makes the program successful? Caregiver must be trained, which I start to give them a systemic structured program, which we I will show you later. 
shortlist a few activity for repetition, which thanks to the 10 weeks all, uh, program, we have able to shortlist some of them. And of course, language. We have to give very clear instruction, how to give instruction <laughs> and very consistent personnel. This is the word, this is the document which I will send in a link for those who want. I help them to shortlist what they want to focus on and they just stay at it. If it's just uh, expressing opinion, they just use it. They no longer need to do more than one activity. Yeah, and um, how do we help the care professional to empower family members to be part of the six brick intervention team? Uh, is this modified activity template for reflection? I'll give you a quick link to that. Uh, okay. For those who want to take a look, this is what they do. They give their own instruction and they do their own observation. Very simple. Everyone can do it. Okay. And the one brick activity bank for the program to run on their own before they... So this is a post-training support now that I'm giving them. So you can see that it has a 52 weeks program and each of them, uh, each of them has a simple activity by color coding. What are the name of each activity and the five, seven days, each day they just do one and increasingly more difficult. Uh, there's some this uh, uh, realignment issue. I have to clean it up and skills and domain glossary checklist so this is what they want to watch out which area they want to focus okay am i done okay let me see yes, <laughs> yes. okay this is what i do make the training very affordable realign the whole three hours level one and level two into seven hours level one and seven hours level two they can't believe the pain that we have to go through to fit into the skill framework of what few future singapore demands so that's where my journey began. It was long and arduous. So here I am. Thank you. Uh, for those who want to know more about program, this is how I sell to the government of Singapore that six brick do address the 16 transferable critical core skill for future economy. And that's how they buy it. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, everyone. I am really appreciative of your time and your listening. I'm open for you to write to me if you want um, all the resources. I'm more than happy to give it all to you guys. Thank you. Yes, Ben, thank you so much. And you've really done gone through so much to get to where you are. We do know that. So thank you so much for sharing. It was absolutely fascinating. And yeah, we're really excited about this area of working with the elderly and, and in, in cases of dementia. So thank you yeah. so much for sharing. Thank you. We need a lot of support. <laughs> Yes, yes. And there's been a lot of people ma mentioning it on the chat as well um, that really want to connect with you. So I'm sure they got your email address from your slide there. And I hope that they connect with you so that you can all work together to really build this into a fabulous, a fabulous thing for, for the elderly. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pespian. Uh, next, I want to present, uh, I want to introduce, there weren't any questions, so I'm just going to carry on then, but very inspirational, Pespian. Um, so I want to introduce our next presenter. Our next presenter is Bonnie. Bonnie, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Welcome, Bonnie. And Bonnie is from Rainbows and Smiles, and she's going to present um, for us now. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Abby will be driving the slides for me. Thanks so much, Abby. So slide one. <laughs> Change slides for me, Abby. There we go. Thank you very much. So here's a very much younger looking Bonnie. Sorry that I'm not sharing my video today, but I have had an eye operation, so I look very frightening. Um, I will, however, share my video just now so that you can actually see just one of the little things that we do. So that's myself and my partner, Rainbows and Smiles is a community-based charity organization dedicated to providing emotional, social, and financial support to children that have been diagnosed with cancer. In that picture, you'll see myself and Nadia. Uh, the two of us are both uh, mothers that have children that have died from cancer. Jed and Hanu are inspiration for the work that we do. One of the major advantages for play therapy when working with children in hospital 
It gives them a condition they crave, freedom. Next slide. So here's a little bit of statistical information. So every year in South Africa, 800 to 1,000 children are diagnosed with cancer each year. The childhood cancer statistic survival rate is 51.1, which is much lower than, the, than America or the first world countries. And the reason for that is because a lot of our children come into the hospital with late symptoms and their diagnosis happens late. So one of the things that we're extremely passionate about is advocating and raising awareness for childhood cancer. Experts in South Africa estimate that around two thirds of childhood cancers in our country remain unreported, which means that in reality, approximately 3000 children get cancer each year in South Africa. Cancer, as you know, knows no boundaries, no color, no race, no gender. Children with cancer, if you hear their laughter, it will melt your heart. Their strength will make a grown person cry. And if you ever see a child fight cancer, it will change your life forever. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is what we do. So we use six bricks as an icebreaker. All the children that you see in um, the presentation, we have written and signed permission to use them today. Uh, so they have social difficulties. So the minute they see anybody coming in, they associate us with doctors, with trauma, something's gonna happen to us. So you'll see the scrubs that we wear are very colorful. And um, this is a COVID uh, time. So we're wearing shields, masks, as well as hair nets. We have ungroomed a little bit. Uh, so <laughs> I'm not gonna go through all of the things that you already know. So just briefly, uh, as we all know in this forum, Play is a child's natural language. We use the guides that have been beautifully prepared for us by Care for Education, and we hand those over to the parents. Over there, you'll see one of the volunteers explaining and showing a picture to a child, but these little booklets are left with the parents, and they are just so appreciative. Um, this particular case, just to, to be a little bit personal, this little person had never been exposed to Lego, and when the click of the two bricks went together the sound of that click as the two little bricks uh, went together we clapped and it was such an incredible achievement when so much else was going wrong she got to click the two little bricks together but for us play is not just about fun play interventions for children who are facing life-threatening diagnosis and tra traumatic um, treatments and procedures are often a distraction next slide Okay, <laughs> the reality over here. So over there, you've got little Kamal Khelo. He's a little boy that I was very fortunate enough to foster during the last year of his life. Um, and what, what you see here is him playing with the, the six bricks. And in the picture next door, you've got the, his, his, his idea of what his little family looks like. Over there is Stinky Dog, which is our dog. Next to the dog is me. You'll notice that I am the bigger figurine. Next to that is, is, is his biological mother. And slightly away, the blonde little girl <laughs> is who Kamuhelo chose to be himself. And, and we're very gender respectful, so we let him be <laughs> the blonde little girl over there. And at the back is the hospital. And um, the play therapists that are amongst us can take a moment to just see how he is slightly separated from the people he loves. But we are there and the hospital at this stage during this play session was behind him. So next slide, please. OK, here's us having some fun. And um, so play is part of the holistic care that we provide for children that are, are suffering with cancer. These children are so much more vulnerable and often children with cancer develop later learning disabilities and learning problems. So all of the mathematical things that the previous presenter just spoke about, these are the things that we can look at as well, as well as the adjustment to separation, especially during the COVID time, parents had to leave their children at the hospital. There's a lot of anger and aggression. Sometimes there's sibling rivalry, there's anxiety, fears, self-esteem problems. These kids are adjusting to major life changes all the time. One of the, the most traumatic things that we see 
is the separation anxiety. And I'm going to talk about how Six Bricks has helped with that now. Next slide, please. OK, so this is our pain management tool. Um, I've actually got the bricks in my hand. Maybe I'll be brave enough and, and turn the camera on, but no judging, right? I've had an eye operation. Never money. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so I've got the bricks in my hand. This is what they look like. So each one of them is on the pain scale. I'm going to just so I don't get all shy, turn my camera back off again. Um, and, and I think it's pretty obvious how the pain scale actually works. So, you know, the red indicating the worst uh, physical pain that they can be going through. But also we can use this for them to give us the red brick if they're having emotional distress. And these issues can be sort of, you know, it, it's an icebreaker to get into what the underlying issues really are. Um, the orange brick, obviously the next phase, uh, you can't do things the way you normally do. So you show me the orange brick. The yellow brick is things are bad, but not too bad. The light blue brick is, is probably when we, we try to get involved the most because that's showing absolutely psychosocial as well as mental, as well as perhaps physical. And it's almost like I call the blue, the light blue brick, almost the give up brick. So when we show them the light blue brick, that's when we, we try and get, you know, psychosocial supports and, and as much support play therapy for that child. And then we've got the dark blue, which shows that they're a little bit frustrated, but things are okay. And then the ultimate is everything is okay. There is absolutely nothing wrong. We're enjoying cuddling the fluffy little toys and having lots of fun. So that's pain management. Not only is it physical, but it's social, psycho, psychosocial, all of it in, in just using six bricks. Next one. <laughs> there you go. So here's a six bricks trending as comfort care. So over there, you'll see little Kamachelo in our home and next to him are the people that he loves. They're keeping him safe and he's feeling secure because they're in bed with him and he's feeling OK. And those little three frig figurines would travel with him and he'd keep them in his pocket because they were the people that mattered to him and he'd feel safe. Over there in this middle one, you've got the blue brick. So what we did with the bricks is we gave each little brick a personality. So I was the blue brick. So if I would video call, I would say, show mama the blue brick. And then he would be able to show me the blue brick. And, um, you know, for example, Catherine was the red brick and, and Nadia was the green brick. So each little brick was a person. And when he was feeling insecure, he could hold his brick and know that his person was with him. And then you can see him from transitioning from home all the way to the hospital bed and sleeping next to him, making him feel safe and secure are his, his mummy and him. Uh, next slide, please. So, six bricks trending as hygiene. So, the medications that children take um, to treat cancer make their skin irritable, itchy, dry. It often bursts open and makes them more susceptible to infection. So, we teach um, the children how to wash their six bricks and teach them the importance of the hygiene. One of the major benefits through COVID with the six bricks was that we could just literally spray them down and continue to use them. And then all the activities within the activity book, the little, um, you know, does the Lego brick float, etc. All of that can be done during the hygiene phase to make it fun and interactive. Next slide. <laughs> So care for education is so important to us. In the slide, you can see just the joy and the love um, that we're able to give to these children that are fighting, fighting life-threatening conditions. And um, the smallest thing like delivering these sets just mean absolutely so much to these children. Next slide, there you go. So just before I close, I'd just like to leave you with one thought. Our children fighting cancer ride their little bikes in hallways in the hospital. They don't play in the park. They know the names of chemo instead of their classmates. Nurses, doctors, the Rainbows and Smiles team are their family and friends. Thank you to Care for Education for making 
the children that are fighting cancer's lives so much better. And then just in, in closing, I'm going to put my camera back on again. And when I would leave Kamohelo in the hospital, I would put the little brick inside the tummy and there's a little zip over here. So I'm inside, so I'm always within his heart. And now that he has passed on, he is still within my little heart and I have the little toy with me as a reminder. Thank you so much, everybody, for your time. Bonnie, thank you so much. And just absolutely amazing work that you guys are doing. I, I can't um, emphasize enough how, how incredible the work is that you guys do. And I think how touched everybody is from your presentation. And um, we've had lots of beautiful comments in the chat. Um, but if there's anybody who's got any questions for Bonnie, now's your time. Um, okay. Um, yeah, Beanal asks if we can share your email. I, I think, Beanal, we've also put the Rainbows and Smiles link on there for their Facebook page into the chat as well. Um, but, Bonnie, that's up to you around uh, contacts. There we go. Thank you very much. Um, so, Bonnie's put her email address uh, or the, yeah, her email address in the chat there for everybody to contact her if they would like to. Um, but yes, thank you very much, Bonnie, for the presentation. So, very exciting. You all had to guess something new. Some of you had good guesses. So, I want to introduce Duncan. He's going to come and talk to us about our something new. <laughs> Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Duncan, and I'm going to introduce something that has been in the cards for quite a while, but it's only now that we're able to sort of start it. Um, I hope all of you are familiar with the Six Bricks app. You may have downloaded it a couple of times, I hope. And all I want to say is this. The app was designed in South Africa, um, mainly for South African users. It was heavily text-based. It was designed in such a way that it would be a simple download, it would be simple for our South African users to use, and for people to just get to grips with Six Bricks very quickly and find the activities that they want to do. What we didn't expect was the international community downloads. Now, what's happened is the app has been downloaded in over 90 countries and has just reached, was about to reach 10,000 downloads worldwide. So it is grown quite substantially, and we've just kind of decided that it's about time um, that we start to design and come up with our brand new Six Bricks app for our international audiences. And we have just a snippet of what's going to be available soon coming up now in this video. Just a snippet of the app. 
that's been developed, it's currently going to be going into its beta phase. So what that means is we're going to be releasing it onto app stores, hopefully by the end of July, um, possibly sooner. And we would like you and anyone else to give it a try. So you would download it from the app store and test it out yourselves. Being a beta, it's in its testing version. So please expect that there's going to be some bugs. There's going to be some things that aren't quite right with it. There's going to be some things that don't look right. There could be text overlays. There could be some funny animations. But what we would like you to do is to go through as many of the activities that you can find on the app, try them out, see how it works, and then give us some feedback so that we are able to change it and make it even better before we release it fully onto all of the app stores. Now, the app will have about 60 activities sitting on it when it launches. And after that, we will be looking at running updates. Now, what we've decided to do with the app is it's not running like a normal app. This has been developed in what they call the Unity engine, which is a gaming engine. And it's able to do far more than your standard apps will do. What's special about it is that you'll be able to download it once, and it will not then use any data on your phone unless there is an update pending, but we don't plan to be running many updates. So you will only be able to download the app once, and then it should just run regardless of whether you have data or not. It's perfect to use. It's fun to use. It's got some awesome background music I found, <laughs> and the animations inside are really, really important. So the animations are going to be able to teach you how to use the bricks for your activities in a very fun way. So please, when you are looking at the app, critique it quite well and give us both the negative feedback and positive feedback. We want to know both to see what works. And when it's finally released out onto the app store, into the big wide world, we will be able to let you know. But that's it for me. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. So we will be sending out emails when the app is launched with a link to the actual app itself. It'll be available on Android devices as well as iOS, so your Apple devices as well. How big it is right now, I'm not too sure, but I hope you guys will be able to use it and see it and test it out. So please let us know what's going on. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Duncan. So very, very exciting. We can't wait to um, get all the all the stuff going. Um, and then we had a little special surprise for you. So I wanted to introduce my colleague here. I think many of you know Linda and Duncan and all the rest of us training, but Fakile, you probably won't know as much behind the scenes. This is Fakile. You can see how short I am. Um, <laughs> Okay, so Fikir is here to just tell us a little bit about our something exciting, our some special surprise. So you all know, <laughs> friends, at last it's all, it's all the center. You all know that we also do training in our Duplo play boxes. And Fikir has been working on a very special project around the Duplo play boxes. But you'll see that it also relates very much to our six bricks as well. So I'm going to let Fikir tell you a little bit about the project and then he's going to show you the exciting um, so today I'll be sharing with you a picture book about Playbox. So Playbox is a charity box prepared and distributed by the Lego Foundation. The box is made out of Duplo, a lot of manipulatives, a mixture of them. Um, the story was created and written by Gareth Rossiter, a researcher that works with uh, Care for Education. And you know, it, it was illustrated by me, and we worked closely together to um, see it go through and to be seen by you. So today we'll be showing you a snippet of how it's going to look, and um, I'll let Abby play the video for you. This is a story about the play box. One day in an early childhood development center in South Africa, a teacher is seen sitting down with her children next to her. One child asks the teacher, teacher, where does Duplo come from? The teacher responds, sit down children and I'll show you. In Denmark, a country far away across the sea is a big factory. That is where Lego and Duplo bricks are made for children all over the world. Some grannies and grandpas who are too old to still work at the factory wanted to fill play boxes of Lego and Duplo to send to children in South Africa. All the play boxes are then stacked and put in big containers to start the journey to South Africa. The containers are loaded on a truck that drives them to a big river harbor. The ships in the harbor sail a 100 kilometers down the river to the North Sea. 
the ship sails south into the big Atlantic Ocean and down the coast of Africa. It sails for 20 days. The play boxes have arrived in South Africa, but they still have a long way to go. A big crane lifts three containers of play boxes off the ship and loads them onto a truck. Now the truck driver drives for nearly two days from Kwazum Natal to the Cape for Education offices in the big city of Johannesburg. At Care for Education offices, everybody helps to unpack the play boxes and pack them into a big storeroom. The teachers from the preschool centers get up early to attend a Duplo and Lego training at Care for Education. Some teachers travel by car, some teachers take the bus, other teachers travel by taxi and walk some of the way. At Care for Education offices, the teachers have lots of fun during the training. So here we are with our play box that came all the way across the sea from Denmark to our center in South Africa. Let's build some of the things we saw in the play box travel story. What were they? Asks the teacher. The end. <laughs> so Fix has done an amazing job with him and Gareth working on that very hard. And I think you can see that between the play boxes and our six bricks, they take a long time to get to us. Um, and they go on quite a journey themselves as well. So just uh, we, we are still busy finishing it off and we'll let everybody know once the publication is ready. And um, yes, very exciting. So thank you very much, Fix, and well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.